Hello everyone, welcome back. It's been a while. Now today I'm going to present to you two uh, different Hooke's Law related questions that looks very similar uh, at a glance. Right? But if you look carefully, uh, there is a very minor and important difference there. Right? Now let's take a look at the first uh, Hooke's Law related uh, question here. <clears throat> okay. So if you read that through, um, we have um, a string that is having a natural length of uh, 0.8 meter and a modulus of elasticity of uh, lambda newton here. And then uh, at the middle of the string, uh, we are going to attach um, a mass or a particle of 0.3 kilogram that is attached to the center. Right now, the distance between A and B is uh, 1.2 meter apart. Now, um, the particle is going to sort of, uh, we're going to release the particle in this case, and then it's going to fall, of course. Right now, the particle descends uh, 0 0.32 meter vertically before coming uh, to instantaneous rest. Now, that's the key words here instantaneous rest okay now there's a lots of um, misconception about instantaneous uh, rest instantaneous rest means momentarily at rest uh, doesn't mean that it stopped moving it just mean that it's going to change direction now that is a very important concept instantaneously at rest means uh, the particle is about to change direction right now, uh, what make it, uh, what make the particle able to change direction is due to uh, the force, the resultant force that is acting in the opposite direction, right? Now, here I'm going to show you a very uh, simple simulations here, as how the particle is going to fall and then what happened uh, through all those uh, stages here. All right, now let's take a look. All right, now you can see that initially is falling uh, from initial velocity of zero meter per second, and then uh, it's going to pick up speed, of course, uh, because the uh, the weight component is greater than the uh, tension of the string at this point, and then it's going to keep on uh, falling, but at the same time, the tension of the string would um, would be increasing as the object fall, right? <clears throat> Until a point uh, where the string uh, reach 0 0.32 meter vertically uh, from the line AB here. Uh, that is when the particle reach instantaneous rest. All right. Now I'm going to write it down here. At this point, uh, now it is instantaneously at rest, meaning that the V is equal to zero meter per second at this point but that doesn't mean that the particle stop there it just means that it's going to change direction the main reason why it's going to change direction is because uh, the tension at this point uh, the vertical component of the tension at this point will be greater than the uh, component of the weight at this point Right now, the weight in this case is given by. Uh, let's assume that the gravitational field strength is given as uh, 10 newton per kg here. Right, so therefore the weight in this case will be 3 newton. Okay, right. So we have uh, the two tension here. All right, which is the same. Okay, and then uh, it has already four zero point three two meter. Okay, so uh, I like to stress again the misconception about instantaneous rest is uh, the object is at uh, stationary. Now that is the wrong um, concept or misconception. Instantaneous at rest. Instantaneous at rest means the object is about to change direction because the resultant force is acting in the opposite direction All right so at this point the resultant force is acting in this direction upward 
uh, that's the reason why there will be at this point when you reach instantaneous at rest uh, there will be an upward acceleration there will be an upward acceleration therefore the net force is not equal to zero so at this point i like to stress the net force is not equal to zero <coughs> Uh, therefore, we cannot assume that the upward force is the same as the downward force here. Right? Now, because of this, the correct way or the easier way to solve this um, Hooke's Law related um, scenario is by using conservation of energy here. Right? <clears throat> okay. Now, we can see that uh, from the start here, just now the object started from here. Object started from here, all right? Okay, maybe I'm going to uh, label this as M then. Okay, by using conservations of energy, uh, it is stated that the sum of so here I just make it uh, easier to refer. So sum of the energy at the point at this point M uh, at the initial position before it was released must be the same as the sum of energy when it reach uh, this position at uh, 0 0.32 meters uh, vertically downward right? so uh, let me label this as uh, p then okay since the, there is no p here so i'm going to label this as uh, position p now that must be the same as uh, the sum of energy at position p right? <clears throat> now at position m uh, we only have elastic potential energy because uh, the kinetic energy was uh, zero. So we have and then the extension. So at this point of time, the, uh, the um, extended length uh, was 1.2 meters, but the natural length is 0 0.8. Therefore, there will be a 0 0.4 uh, meter extension okay and then of course if you really want to include the idea of uh, kinetic energy at that position m so we could uh, actually write that as 0 0.3 uh, half mv square in this case whereby the v initially was zero and then it should be the same as the sum of energy at position p so sum of energy at position P, we know that uh, it is instantaneously at rest. Therefore, we have zero square again. There's no kinetic energy. And then uh, next, um, if we use this as our reference, okay, if we use this as our reference, uh, therefore, uh, we will have a gravitational potential energy with respect to this reference line uh, be because it's below the reference line therefore we will put a negative 10 right <clears throat> so therefore it will be 0 0.3 uh, by g and then by the vertical height which is 0 0.32 okay and then lastly uh, lastly we also have at this point we have uh, elastic potential energy right <clears throat> okay just let me erase this uh, reference uh, point here so we also have elastic potential energy at this point which is given by half uh, lambda okay i think in this case let me uh, simplify that so that it's not very messy because there is no um, kinetic energy at point P, so I'll just uh, skip that. Uh, we will only have um, 0 0.3 by 10 by 0 0.32 then. All right. <clears throat> and then uh, plus the elastic potential energy, which is 0 0.8 at this point. Now, uh, at this point, you can always use your Pythagoras theorems to figure out uh, this length here. Uh, now, I have already calculated this uh, to make the calculation easier. So that is 0 0.68 uh, meter. So therefore, uh, the total extension, now the extensions will be given by, okay, maybe I'm going to write down the extension at the side here. 
so that at least you know how the extension was obtained. So that is 2 by 0 0.68. Uh, that's the total length at this point. Subtract off is 0 0.8 there. <clears throat> and then uh, that should give us 0 0.56 uh, meter extension. So I'm going to write that down 0 0.56 uh, square here. And then there you go. That is our conservation of energy. Right? Now we're going to clean this up and then uh, perform a bit of, of um, <clears throat> algebra manipulation uh, so that our our objective can be reached. We are going to obtain uh, the modulus of elasticity here, which is given by lambda, right? Okay. <clears throat> so in this case, I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to rewrite this again. Okay. Maybe I'm going to write down like 1.6. It will be easier. Okay. That will be okay. Hold on. Rather write as 1.6. 0 0.4 square here <clears throat> and then uh, from here I will have okay this one I can just uh, simplify that uh, that will be 0 0.96 I assume let me check one more time yep okay and then uh, from here uh, itself I will have I can move this uh, over to the other side Okay, for simplification, uh, I'm going to have like 0 0.16 and then 0 0.96 here. That should be the same as 0 0.96. Okay, after rearranging. So from here, uh, you can see that the lambda can be obtained quite uh, directly as 10 Newton. All right, so I hope... Um, that gives you a simple idea as uh, to how to solve this um, Hooke's law related problem using conservations of energy. All right. Now, uh, there will be students that are very um, interested in some other um, technique to solve this. As I mentioned before, the resultant force is not equal to zero. So you might be wondering, can I actually solve it using Newton's second law? Yes, uh, of course you can solve it use, using uh, Newton's second law. All right now, I'm going to show it to you how we can solve it using Newton's second law. All right, now I'm going to pause here for a while, and then I do a bit of cleanup, and then come back with the um, Newton's second law. All right, welcome back. As I mentioned. Uh, we can also solve this uh, problem using Newton's second law, right? We still have the same uh, setting here. Okay, I'd like to stress one more time. At uh, position P, when the object is at uh, instantaneously at rest, it means that uh, the object is about to change directions and then um, accelerate in the opposite direction. So initially it was uh, falling downward. Uh, now when you reach instantaneous rest, uh, it's going to change direction. It's about to move up. All right. Now we are going to use uh, Newton's second law uh, at position P. So using Newton's second law, uh, we have to be very mindful with Newton's second law. Newton's second law states that the acceleration is directly proportional to the resultant force. Uh, therefore, it should be the same as, uh, in this case, we are supposed to use a bit of uh, calculus, all right? <clears throat> so I'm going to write down uh, uh, its uh, original definitions for Newton's second law, which is given by uh, mv dv dx here. All right. Now the main reason why I choose this uh, option is because I'm interested in the velocity at point p where it is actually equal to zero and then i'm interested uh, in the displacement x right now i have not <coughs> described the uh, displacement here so let's call the x as the displacement from this position here so i'm going to call this position x here okay all right all right 
All right. So let's call this uh, position x in this case, right? <clears throat> okay. So uh, by using this uh, Newton's second law, uh, we can set up an equation and then solve for the velocity uh, in this case, all right? So the resultant force uh, will be given by, all right, maybe it's easier for me to just label this as uh, angle theta, all right? So we know that uh, the particle is going to change direction and then accelerate upward. Uh, therefore, we will have 2 T sine subtract off with its uh, weight component. Uh, therefore, it will produce an acceleration. Okay, there you go. And then uh, in this case, I can also write as because the mass is given as 0 0.3. So that will be dv dx in this case. All right. I uh, hope that is clear. And then uh, the tension uh, at this uh, x. So take, for instance, the tension uh, at, at this point. Okay. So if you are interested uh, with the tension at this point, we have already uh, sort of uh, calculated its uh, tension here, right? <clears throat> so let's uh, try to uh, calculate its uh, tension here. Okay, so if we calculate the tension itself, okay, we have, um, that will be, let me see, let me check one more time. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so at this point, uh, we can, uh, right, we can actually set up a general equations for uh, tension in this case. Okay, so the general equations for the tension before the x is actually 0 0.32 here. Uh, now the tensions would be given by um, this expression here, right? We're going to use that uh, Pythagoras theorems also. So that will be like uh, 2 lambda over 0 0.8. Okay, multiply by its uh, extension. So its extensions will be given by, we'll write it down here. All right, now that will be the extensions uh, at any uh, displacement, not necessarily uh, when the x is equal to um, 0 0.32, right? <clears throat> and then uh, from here itself, uh, we need to multiply by the sine, right? So the sine theta, if we use the general expressions for the displacement x here, so the sine is uh, basically x over... Okay, and then there you have it. And then from here, we will have 0 0.3. Okay, All right. <clears throat> so I hope that is clear. And then uh, from here onwards, uh, we have to do a bit of um, rearranging. All right, so after uh, we are going to, after we are going to rearrange this, okay, this is how it would actually look like. Okay, let me see whether I can arrange it nicely so zero point okay uh, this part will be what do we have we have five lambda x here and then we have two lambda x and then after that minus three here Okay, now from here uh, onwards, we're going to uh, reverse um, the derivative process by performing the antiderivative here. Okay, so we're going to integrate this uh, from 0 to v uh, with respect to dx, of course. Uh, the same thing go here. 
uh, 0 to x with respect to dx here. Yeah. And then uh, by carrying out these uh, proper integrations, uh, we will get uh, this part here. Let me rewrite that properly. And then uh, we will get this. And then, of course, uh, this part, you have to help yourself with the integration. You have to use uh, substitution, in this case, to integrate this. Uh, therefore, we will end up with this. Okay, and then uh, finally, we have this one here. And then don't forget, uh, we also need to include the zero. So when you substitute zero into uh, this one here, it will be uh, it will be plus 1.2 uh, lambda. So here I take a bit of shortcut uh, to include this uh, value directly, right? And then uh, we we know that when it is instantaneously at rest, uh, when v is equal to zero meter per second, uh, we know that that um, uh, is achieved when x is equal to 0 0.32 meter. All right. So therefore, we're going to substitute this um, back into here. Uh, we will get phi over 2 lambda 0 0.32 square. Uh, 2 lambda, this one will be 0 0.68. And then uh, this is just uh, 0 0.96. And then plus 1.2 lambda should be equal to 0 here. All right, and then this is 0. Uh, oops, sorry, 0. 0.256. And then this one will be like 1.36 lambda uh, plus 1.2 lambda, and then that should be equal to 0. 0.96 here. <coughs> okay. So just let me uh, try this out, see whether um, all the number tally. Okay, hold on. Okay, so once you uh, done this, you should end up with 0 0.096 uh, lambda. Yes, I own always miss that out okay now and then therefore we can conclude that uh, the modulus of elasticity is actually equal to uh, 10 newton exactly the same uh, value that we will get uh, using conservation of energy but anyway um, conservation of energy is uh, much more uh, neat and clean in its approach, whereby if you use Newton's second law here, you might have to apply um, calculus, um, antiderivative, and then uh, you have to know a bit about um, substitutions uh, technique for integrations and some other integration technique. So um, those are the drawback of using uh, the second method. But anyway, uh, both these methods complement each other. You can uh, uh, tally uh, with each other's uh, methods and the answers. So, right? so I hope that this is clear. Uh, any student who would like to challenge yourself using this method, by all means, uh, go ahead and uh, play around with the methods. Right? Okay, so don't forget. Uh, lastly, I need to stress one more time. Instantaneously at rest doesn't mean that uh, the object actually is stationary. It only means that uh, the object is start, starting to change direction. Uh, therefore, uh, the, there will be a resultant force acting in the opposite direction. Okay, now this is the first question related to Hooke's law. Next, uh, stay tuned. I'm going to show you the second example, which looks very similar to this, uh, but with a minor difference there. All right, stay tuned. All right, welcome back. Let's take a look at the second uh, scenario. As I said, uh, this is another Hooke's Law scenario that looks very similar to the first uh, problem that you have encountered just now. Right? Uh, here, not much different. The particle also released from the uh, midpoint between A and B. 
Um, now this time the uh, distance between A and B is further, um, is separated at uh, 4.8 meter apart. So you can see from the diagram it is about 2.4 uh, from the meter. Right? It, it was uh, released uh, from rest and then it's going to fall vertically downward. All right. And then um, here the only difference that you can identify is instead of saying it is instantaneously at rest, uh, it is stated that acceleration is zero. Now let's get um, the fundamentals correct first. Accelerations uh, of the particle is zero may actually indicate two conditions. It may actually refer to the particle is stationary right so if the particle is stationary acceleration zero we can accept that right uh, but there's no further information uh, regarding that it just stated that in the subsequent motion it never said that uh, it is instantaneously at rest it never says that the velocity is equal to zero therefore uh, we don't make that assumptions that when it's mentioned acceleration equals zero, uh, it will satisfy the second conditions for acceleration. As I mentioned, uh, acceleration equals zero may mean uh, the object could be stationary or moving at a constant speed or constant velocity in this case. Now, the second scenario is more likely to be applied in this condition. Therefore, I'm going to summarize again, according to this context, when they mention accelerations of the particle is zero in the subsequent motion, it means that uh, the object would continue to move at a constant speed. Or you can say that the object would be moving at the maximum speed at this point. Uh, it's not the same as instantaneous uh, rest. All right. Now, that is the misconceptions that you need to uh, avoid right so once you are clear with these conditions now uh, then you can ask yourself which method is more relevant here okay now I'm going to show you the a little bit of the simulations of how um, the action of the particle look like all right so let's take a look okay so it's going to fall down vertically uh it's going to pick up speed of course it's going to accelerate downwards and then uh, there will be a time when the accelerations uh, slowly decreases until it is zero all right because the uh, there will be a time when the tension when the tension of the uh, string um, this elastic string is the same as its uh, vertical weight component downward and then uh, it occur when you reach uh, the vertical height of 0 0.7 here okay so i hope that is clear now bear in mind here i need to write down at this point acceleration is equal to 0 meter per second square here it's not instantaneous uh, at rest and then uh, we do have the uh, weight component uh, in this case we are having 0 0.28 kilogram of mass so therefore by using the same gravitational field strength which is 10 newton per kg for simplification here our weight uh, sorry the, the weight of the particle uh, will be 2.8 newton okay now i hope that's clear <clears throat> and then uh, we do have the tension at this point okay right now uh, for this scenario it's better to use newton's second law so using newton's second law uh, acceleration is directly proportional to its resultant force but we know that its acceleration is equal to zero therefore the resultant force must be equal to zero and then the resultant force uh, in this case would be all right now i'm going to label this as theta easier to refer so we will have 2t sine theta um, subtract off with 2.8 must be equal to zero there so indirectly it means t sine theta is equal to 1.4 
right so I hope that's clear and then tension tension at this point right now I have done a bit of calculations here uh, using Pythagoras theorem you would be able to find the uh, total length here uh, so the length for the first part here would be uh, 2.5 this part would be 2.5 also meter right <clears throat> so from here um, our tension so the tensions will be uh, given by lambda over its uh, natural length is 4 and then uh, the extensions must be uh, 5 minus 4 then. okay and then sine theta uh, sine theta basically is 0 0.7 over 2.5 here and then that will be equal to 1.4 here right. <clears throat> okay so I hope that is uh, clear at this point. And then uh, from here onwards, the calculations uh, should be quite uh, simple to handle with a calculator, I would say. Okay, so that will be like 1.4 here. All right, and then therefore, uh, you can see that that is actually 14, um, 7 to 20. Uh, therefore, we have uh, successfully proven that the modulus of elasticity is equal to 20 Newton. All right. Now, that is that simple using Newton's second law. Uh, but we can't, uh, I wouldn't say that we can't use conservation of energy, but I'm going to present to you uh, how to use uh, conservations of energy in this case. All right. Okay. Now, I'm going to erase off this. Okay, using conservations of energy. Now, the same idea taken here, we will say that the um, total energy at position M must be the same as total energy at position uh, P. All right. And then uh, from here, uh, we have uh, total energy at position M. We only have uh, elastic potential energy at this point. So that will be half lambda over 4 here. Um, now the extensions, that will be like 4.8, uh, 0.8 here. Square. Okay. And then uh, we have... Um, Okay, we have uh, elastic potential energy here also, which is 4. Uh, now the extension is 1, of course, at this point. Um, we also have gravitational potential energy, which is uh, 2.8 by 0 0.7 here. And then, don't forget, uh, we know that acceleration is equal to 0. That doesn't mean... Uh, velocity is equal to zero, all right? So acceleration equal to zero uh, just means that the object could be moving at constant speed. So constant speed means at this point, there will be a certain speed, which is given by half mv square here. Or in this case, I would rather put in 0 0.28 v square. Okay, and then uh, from here, you can uh, do a bit of simplifications. For instance, we have uh, lambda 8 here, and then uh, we have 0 0.8 square. Uh, this one also the same. And then we have like, what do we have here? Um, 1.96 1 yeah, 1.96 here, and then we have 0 0.14 V. Okay. <clears throat> and then uh, from here, uh, we can do a bit of simplifications here. Uh, let me see what do we have here. 0 0.1, um, 0 0.8, 0 0.0, 0 0.08 lambda equal to this. Did I get it right? Okay. Um, this is, yep, correct. This is 1.96. Okay, all right. <clears throat> now, um, for some of you who actually make that assumptions, saying that uh, 
it might be instantaneously at rest because uh, of that misconception. All right, therefore, if you put this as zero, okay, let's let's uh, make uh, this, this is the misconception. All right, I'm going to write down the misconception. If we if we assume uh, v equals zero. Okay. Uh, therefore, we will have 0 0.08 lambda equal to lambda over 8 minus 1.96 then. Okay. And then therefore, you will have like, um, let me see here, 0 0.125, I think. Okay. So 0 0.125 um, lambda minus of 0 0.08 lambda will be equal to 1.96 okay let me just use the calculator to calculate this very quickly okay <coughs> and then okay so from here right you would be able to find out that your lambda is actually equal to okay if you actually divide this you would get approximately 44 oh, 44 uh, newton which is not uh, the right answer as you can see so that is the misconceptions that we are supposed to avoid in this case right so the first thing uh, is the concept is a concept about acceleration equals zero um, does not mean velocity equals zero unless it is stated that it is stationary right so that is the reason why we should not assume that it is also instantaneously at rest right <clears throat> so from here um, now therefore at this point if we are not given any extra information regarding the velocity itself, there is no way we can actually figure out the uh, modulus of elasticity, uh, elasticity here. Sorry, All right. So if you are not given any information regarding the velocity, um, it's uh, quite impossible for us to find the modulus of elasticity here. All right. <clears throat> Okay, but knowing that, knowing that, all right, this is just for learning uh, purpose, knowing that the lambda, okay, so knowing that, knowing the lambda is equal to 20, okay, knowing that is 20, so we can actually substitute inside there, we can sort of figure out uh, what is the speed of the object. At this position here so let's give it a try then all right so from here um, to 1.6 so there will be 1.6 lambda here and then uh, you have like um, so 2.5 here oops sorry 1.6 there is 2.5 sorry that's 1.6 2.5 minus 1.96 plus 0 0.14 v square here okay so just let me uh, do that very quickly there 1.6 there okay uh, then therefore your v square will be um, 1.06 divided by 0 0.14 there okay hold on um, 1.06 divided by okay um, that will be approximately 7.571 okay and then uh, therefore if you take the square root of this one let me see 7.571 for instance now that would actually give us 2.75 to the nearest three significant figures. Now that's how fast the uh, particle is moving when its acceleration is actually equal to zero, right? So I hope this uh, clear uh, any misconceptions that you have, uh, especially 
when you handle uh, two different hook slow related problem that looks very similar here right okay um, I hope this would be helpful in your learning and in your upcoming exam all right best of luck uh, I will try my best to uh, prepare another sets of uh, full sets of the uh, past year paper uh, on mechanics and uh, statistics right so do stay tuned uh, uh, give me a bit of time to complete that hopefully by tomorrow night yeah you should be able to get uh, a, a new videos on that uh, that could help you uh, with your upcoming exam right okay uh, best of luck everyone